Well, good afternoon, everyone. I am Bex Hayhoe, the Executive Director of United to End Homelessness here with Orange County United Way. Thank you so much for joining us for today's chat, where we're going to continue our conversation around the subject of senior homelessness. We had part one of this series last month, where we were looking at this topic on a national level. We were so excited to have the prominent researcher, Dr. Dennis Culhane, uh, joining us for that chat. If you missed that, it's available on our YouTube and our Facebook, so please feel free to check it out. Um, so Dennis Culhane was talking about senior homelessness and how it's been increasing around the country. When we look at the data here in Orange County, unfortunately, we see the same trend happening. There was unfortunately a significant increase in senior homelessness between 2019 and 2021 or 2022. When we look at the HMIS data from 2019 to 2021, we also see a change in the data and unfortunately the same increase occurring. For today's discussion, I am very excited to be joined uh, by two people that are becoming dear friends of mine and co-conspirators in the fight to end homelessness here in Orange County. I am delighted to be joined by Kelly Bruno Nelson, the Executive Director of Cal Optima's Medical Cal AIM Initiative, and Santa Bob, a very old friend of mine, advocate, advisor, member of the Orange County Continuum of Care's Lived Experience Advisory Committee. A warm welcome to both of you. Um, and I'm gonna come to each of you and ask you to introduce yourself and to explain your connection to senior homelessness. And so Kelly, I'm gonna come to you first. Thank you so much. I am very excited to be a part of this uh, conversation. And this is something that is very near and dear to my heart. As you mentioned, I'm currently the executive director of Medi-Cal and Cal AIM for Cal Optima Health. But in a pro prior life, uh, I was executive director, uh, CEO of a nonprofit that dealt specifically with uh, homelessness and unhoused population. But more specifically and more importantly, I'm currently getting my doctorate degree in social work with an emphasis on older adult house, uh, older adult homelessness. And so this is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart and something that I think is absolutely a crisis in society today. So thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Kelly. I know when I heard of your background, I was really excited. The, the growth in senior homelessness is something that I have been watching, that we have been watching and have been getting more and more concerned about. And so to have stumbled upon your expertise and to know that we have that knowledge here in Orange County is really, really encouraging. And Santa Bob, I'm gonna to come to you now. Would you care to introduce yourself and explain your connection, please? Yes, my name is Robert Morris, and I am known as Santa Bob. If we meet, please call me that. <clears throat> I spent 10 years living on the streets in Orange County. My homelessness did not end until I was 66 years old. I was, <laughs> so I spent half of my 60s on the streets. I understand what it's like to be... Uh, a senior and on the streets in this county. Unfortunately, the people I knew on the streets, many of them are still there. And I see them on a weekly basis. Those that I do not read have passed away. So uh, I really want to help the seniors who are homeless or are about to experience it. We need to prevent that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bob. I'm really looking forward to, he to hearing more about your firsthand experiences and the knowledge that you have from your friends who are still unhoused here in our community. So we heard from Dr. Culhane, who was talking about some of the barriers that older adults and seniors might face when it comes to accessing resources. And so I wanna dig in a little bit deeper to this um, with both of you. 
So we'll start with like, what are some of the unique needs of this population that should be taken into consideration in terms of service delivery? So let's start with service delivery first, and then we'll kind of move on to, to barriers. If you mingle them up, that's totally okay. Um, and Bob, I'm gonna come to you first for this one to talk about the unique needs. I think some of the unique needs are a bit, Seniors, many of them are in declining health. They have reduced mobility. All programs designed to help them must come to them. Their ability to uh, afford transportation, get transportation, or go any place out of there other than their small local area which they stay in. It, Really, if you really want to serve them, you have to go to them. Thank you, Bob. Kelly, I saw you unmute, and so I feel like you had something you wanted to add to that, so I'll come to you. Well, thank you. You know, we know that the, um, the unhoused older adult population, as you mentioned earlier, Bex, is the fastest growing um, cohort of unhoused population, and 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 that is and that is 50 years and over, and that is really because of our baby boomers, right? Our baby boomers that are aging, and oftentimes, um, you know, fell upon you know one crisis, um, loss of a house, loss of a spouse, that is really catapulting them into an uh, unfair rental market that is unkind and 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 really unaffordable. And so we're we're, we're knowing that a lot of these individuals are experiencing homelessness for the first first time after the age of 50. And so it's not a chronic kind of condition, unfortunately, for them, it's something that is new. We also know that research tells us that individuals that are aging on the street age at about 20 years faster than those of us that are housed. So for example, if somebody is living on the street and they have a birth certificate that says that they're 50, for all intents and purposes, that individual is 70. And that is not just the way they look. That is what's happening inside of their body. They have the same chronic conditions that a 70 year old has, the same cognitive impairments that a 70 year old has. And that aging process happens as quickly as six months. It's a very fast process. So what Santa Bob is saying is absolutely right. When we're looking at these folks on the street, we're looking at them and they have unique needs. They have needs, they need assistance with activities of daily living. They need assistance with mobility. Um, they need assistance with signing up for benefits that are more specific to their to, to their age. And these are not things that our current uh, shelter system is equipped to accommodate. And so what often happens is these folks are really faced with two choices. You know, they're faced with remaining on the street where they can at least attempt to deal with their needs. And as Santa Bob said, hope that services will come to them or they're forced to face the potential of being pre-institutionalized. And I don't think any of us would like to see that. We don't wanna go into a nursing home before we need to go. We wanna stay as independent as possible for as long as possible. And they're faced with these two choices and not an appropriate choice because our shelter system is simply not equipped and ready to deal with a population that has these specific needs. We look at somebody and we say, you look 50, you must have the conditions associated with being 50. That's just not the case with this population. Uh, Kelly, thank you so much for highlighting that. We know that across the board, there is such a connection between health and homelessness. And I really appreciate you bringing to the forefront again, the data that shows the impact of homelessness on somebody's physical well-being, their mental well-being, and how it does indeed kind of speed up the aging process due to the impacts of experiencing homelessness. So thank you again for highlighting that. Um, Bob, thank you for your, your, your insights on the fact that with that services need to come to people. Um, Bob, I did wanna come back and see if there was anything else that you wanted to add around this part of the discussion on unique needs or any other barriers that you wanted to mention. Well, one of the problems is that we don't even do well with shelters for the homeless. To throw a homeless individual into a congregate 
shelter is they're lost. They don't know what to do. And if it's a couple, we have the unique ability to say, yes, you have been with each other for 50 years. Now we're going to separate you. You go to the men's side, you go to the women's side. They, they also don't do well with that. We do not have shelters that are designed to accommodate seniors. Pure and simple. Thank you for highlighting that. And I think that's a, a really important thread that I heard from both of you. The, the reality is, is that our shelter system is not set up to accommodate the unique needs of seniors experiencing homelessness. So uh, one of the moments where I think for Kelly and I kind of bonded is that we both used the phrase silver tsunami in a conversation. And we're like, oh, OK, you two are passionate about <laughs> the silver tsunami of homelessness and recognizing that we really need to work to get ahead of this. But I say ahead of this, it's already here. We are seeing it through our data. We've seen that senior homelessness has been, there was a significant increase between the 2019 and the 2020 point in time counts. So I wanna ask both of you, what do we need to be doing as a community to address senior homelessness? What do you think Orange County, the community needs to be doing? Um, and Kelly, I'll come to you first. Great. Well, you know, I think the first thing the community needs to do is educate itself, which I appreciate. And thank you very much for putting this, uh, this, this talk on so we can share with folks that when you're talking about the unhoused population, you cannot just put all of them into one bucket and assume that one size fits all. And I think Santa Bob really highlighted that when it comes to the shelter system. Um, I think what Orange County needs to do is it needs to increase and really um, expand its shelter system to include just that, to include spaces for this population to go to receive the services that it needs in order to be successful. So we need to build sites specifically for this population, as said above uh, mentioned, that are not congregate in nature, that may potentially have semi-private rooms with restrooms and facilities and services close to them. And I would add that we also that, that Orange County also needs to ensure that our that our homeless sector and our aging sector are working together because this is really you know a, a cross between these sectors and oftentimes those two you know departments are siloed and they're not working together but now we have a population that touches both of them so it's not just up to people to build the sites it's up to policymakers and funders to also take the time to combine their efforts get to know what each one does and ensure that what we're that we're building and we're supporting processes and 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 and, and policy policies that really have taken into account that we have a population that needs both sides. I really appreciate what you said there, Kelly. And if we do have anybody tuning in today that works on the aging sector side of things, if you're joining us today and you work for a nonprofit, a government agency that's specifically working with the senior population, please send Amy Leaf. Um, who's on our team, you should be able to send her a direct message um, and provide us with your contact information. Or if for some reason you can't get through to her, we're going to drop an email address in the chat box. Our info at unitedtoendhomelessness.com, I believe, is the correct email address. It'll appear in the chat box. But we would love to get more connected with agencies that are specializing in working with the senior population. So if you've joined us today and that is either your area of expertise or your area of passion and you know who we should be talking to, please, please let us know. Um, and with that, Bob, I'm gonna come to you as a community, what should we be doing? Well, I totally agree. We do need to educate ourselves and we need to educate everybody on this. I'm a member of the Lived Experience Advisory Committee, and I am representing, representing seniors. But when this committee started, that position was not there. I knew the numbers from the 2019 point in count time and knew how many seniors there were homeless. 
and it was about twice as many as veterans. The numbers have always been high on seniors. So I lobbied for the posi position on, on the lived experience advisory committee for, to have them add a representative of seniors. And then I felt obligated to take that position after I lobbied for it. But I continue to care for it. The board itself does not have that position available. There, if you are representing seniors, there is no slot for you to join the continuum of care. That needs to change. And one of the suggestions I have, I think there needs to be an overall group that actually joins all senior centers and others working with the seniors to have a network, networking. In Costa Mesa, I'm on the network for homeless solutions, which gets all the service providers and the city together one, once every two weeks and have a discussion on what's going on. This could be done countywide, getting all the, getting all, all representatives of seniors and elected officials together on this. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Bob, for your insight and for, for the work that you've been doing on the CRC side of things as well. I really appreciate the advocacy efforts that you've undertaken, um, and I appreciate how you keep senior homelessness in front of us. Um, Kelly, was there anything else you wanted to add before I switch gears? Um, just wanted to see if there are any last moments or thoughts that popped into your mind as Bob was speaking. Um, I, I love his idea of an advisory committee. I, I think that that's oftentimes a piece that's missing when you know we're talking about developing um, sites and developing you know uh, shelter spaces, which I'm hoping we have a chance to talk about later. But what he's saying and what I could not agree with more is as we move forward and in, in, in really trying to resolve or address the silver tsunami without engaging and incorporating the actual folks that would be utilizing those services and getting their opinions and their expertise as we move forward would be a mistaken missed step. So um, we really have an opportunity to engage um, folks like Santa Bob with lived experience that absolutely know what we need to do. And so I really want to encourage as we come together and as we try to collectively uh, you know, resolve this issue or at least address it, that we want to make sure that we have um, folks at the table that really understand what we're trying to do. Absolutely. It's incredibly important that we involve the very people who have been affected and impacted by this. Um, I couldn't agree more with you on that front, Kelly. And, and our hope in, in hosting these two chats really was to provide that information to the community to get Orange County talking about, about senior homelessness and to see what ideas we might be able to spark for bringing the community together to address this. And so again, I'll say if this is something that you are really passionate about, please don't hesitate to email us and let us know as we try to you know, find the right place um, to move things forward. And then I'm going to move us for community members. And I guess I kind of just went there um, in what I just said. So my apologies. Um, but my next question is, from a point of view of individual community members, so we have 70 people watching right now live on Zoom, and that doesn't count Facebook. What can these people do to help bring more attention to this issue? So my apologies that I already stumbled into that. But Bob, what else can people do? I think people in each of their communities could check in with their senior center, find out what opportunities there are right in their own city to assist. If you happen to be in Costa Mesa and you want to discuss this, every Saturday morning, the Crossing Church, Life on the Streets, we uh, have a breakfast. We host breakfast, showers, laundry, haircuts, bike repairs for the homeless. Stop on in. See, see what we're doing. Look at the ages of some of our guests. And uh, 
feel free to uh, ask me any questions there. I will bend your ear and sign you up for something, but just fair warning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Kelly, how about you? Sure. You know, I, I, I take off my kid gloves a little bit here and say, what do we need to do as community members? As community members, we need to be open and receptive to resolving the issue and allow folks like Santa Bob and United Way that are really trying to do things to solve the issue to do just that, to resolve it. When we talk about maybe expanding the shelter system to include sites and locations that would specifically address this population, we have to build that site. We can't build it on the moon. <laughs> it's going to be in our community. We, what community members, what I would love to see is for folks to recognize that individuals that are unhoused, that are older adults are just like you and me. They're just individuals that are older adults. They are not different than anyone and they deserve to have facilities and places where they can have their needs met just like everybody else. And that those facilities can be within close proximity to neighborhoods and they need to be in neighborhoods in order for us to address this. And so as community members, we need to be open to that. We need to be receptive to that. Now, what I also will say is as community members, we should be demanding that these sites be dignified, that they be built in a way that respects the needs of the population. And so that we're not building facilities that don't take, don't meet the needs like Santa Bob was mentioning earlier, that we're not building congregate facilities for this population, but instead building something that is conducive to their needs. So the community I would feel needs to be open to the concept, allow it to happen, but then also take a stand and demand that these sites be dignified, respectable, and actually meet the need of the population. Thank you so much, Kelly. And, uh, you know, I'm only aware when I think about kind of how we solve homelessness and, and right, the, the key factor for ending anybody's homelessness is a home. And we've talked a lot about shelter and absolutely we need to improve our shelter system for seniors. Absolutely. Um, I agree completely. And so in terms of advocacy efforts for the people that are watching, I would say if you have a shelter in your community, if you're, you know, if your community operates a shelter, maybe try to find out and contact them and find out about how they are working with seniors. Um, it could just be a great conversation to have. Um, if you are somebody that engages with your elected officials, this could be a great conversation. Are they aware of the rise in senior homelessness? You know, what as a, as a city, as a city response to the rise in senior homelessness, what does your community want that to look like? And if that conversation isn't happening, that's a conversation that you could kickstart by engaging with your local elected officials. As we kind of move up from looking at shelter um, and we start looking at housing, you know, we, we don't have the full kind of range of housing that we need that addresses the very unique medical needs that both Kelly and Bob have touched on in this conversation. Um, and to my knowledge, we only have kind of going a one step above that one permanent supportive housing location dedicated to seniors in Orange County. And that is in Anaheim. So huge credit and kudos to the city of Anaheim and the Anaheim Housing Authority. Um, and I believe that we have a link to a community chat in which we talked to Grace Stepter about that very facility uh, or development, I should say, it's called El Verano. So we have one model of what senior permanent supportive housing looks like here, but we're going to need more. And so I would say if you are willing to engage and have conversations with your elected officials, Talk to them about that. Talk to them about housing. Talk to them about the need for specialized housing for seniors who are experiencing homelessness. You know, let's get these conversations going. Let's bring this subject into the light and to the forefront, because I think this is something that as a community, we can all agree that we don't want to be a place where our elderly are left out on the streets. Um, and to experience the suffering that they are experiencing. Um, 
Kelly, I would be remiss if I didn't come to you and ask you if there's anything from your research that you would like the attendees today to know. Is there anything that's maybe surprised you or shocked you from what you've been learning that you think it would be important for our attendees to know? Sure, I would love to share that. Um, briefly before that, I do want to just piggyback on what you just said and let and let our um, listeners know that Cal Optima Health is doing just that, uh, Bex, that we are actually in the process of developing an interim housing recuperative care facility that is specifically for older adults, and that that facility will not only be built in a dignified way with semi-private rooms, private showers, cyber cafes, libraries, you know, basically what you would what you would expect to see in a high end assisted living, but that will also be connected to a pace center so that folks would be able to get medical care on site right there and they'll be able to stay there until we find them a permanent housing location. So really building the continuum with what you just mentioned. Um, but also there has been some research that recently came out of University of uh, California, San Francisco that I did find very interesting, and it had to do, unfortunately, with, uh, uh, with the unhoused uh, older adults dying on the street, and it was looking at the reasons that these individuals were passing away on the street, and I think um, oftentimes when we look at our own biases and what we think about folks that are dying on the street, we automatically go to overdose and that's what's happening. But this research showed that that wasn't the case when it came to older adults. That the reason older adults were dying on the street, the number one reason was heart disease. Um, and what was the most shocking to me is the number two reason was cancer. Um, and, and the third was overdose. Um, I think this is so important because when we start to look at treating this population, we need to be making sure that any sort of medical care, street medicine, whatever we're doing um, that really takes this type of research into uh, account when we're designing these programs. Because oftentimes our biases get in the way and we have made assumptions about things that are simply not true. Um, and so I thought that research was just, it just came out, I think about a month ago. Um, very telling. And, um, and this is where our policymakers have an opportunity to say, let's take this information we have, this research that, we've, that, that we now know, and make sure that our policies reflect that research. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. And I think the team has been busy popping uh, links into the chat. So thank you, team, for being on top of that and making sure that all the attendees can access that. Um, and I know we are reaching at the end of our time together. Um, so Bob, I wanna come to you and say, is there anything that you didn't get to say that you would like to say before we wrap up? Well, I would just like to continue what you were talking about on contacting your local elected officials. I do this on a regular basis and I know they're not always happy with it, but I, I engage with, I've seen, in the past week, I've seen the mayor of Coast Mesa, the excellent John Stevens, three times. We're always discussing something. I, ha, I actually spent one night complaining to him about housing and the city of Coast Mesa has since corrected it. They are going, starting a, permanent supportive housing project. But all the other council members in Coast Mesa are engaged in this and they're very reasonable. So go to your local officials, call them, they'll talk to you, especially if they want to get reelected. <laughs> Thank you for that, Bob. And, and if you're watching and you haven't ever engaged with your local elected officials before, and that sounds a little daunting, uh, we actually offer a training on how to do that. Um, and so Michael Shepard, uh, he leads our housing champion advocacy efforts. And so I'd love for him to pop his email into the chat box. So if you would like to, to know when our next training for that is, or if you'd like us to bring that training to your community, perhaps you're a part of a house of worship 
or a chamber of commerce or to your place of business, we are really happy to teach you how to advocate and how to get involved because I know that can be daunting if you haven't done it before, but let us help make that easy um, so that you can be part of the work here to, to raise awareness on senior homelessness and to hopefully be able to end homelessness here in Orange County. And we are at 1230. Um, and so I just want to say thank you so much um, for joining us today. There is a little feedback survey if you're joining us on Zoom that's popped up. We would love your feedback. It's always incredibly helpful as we shape these conversations and dialogues as we move forward. This chat will go up on our Facebook and on our YouTube. So if you want to pass it on to a friend to watch, um, you are welcome to do so. And so thank you again to our speakers. Thank you for joining us today. Have a wonderful rest of your week.